welcome to the virtual college fair for North Hunterdon High School. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at that same website. Now I'd like to turn it over to our first speaker from the University of Kentucky. Hello. My name is Kara Frankie. I'm from the University of Kentucky, and I'm going to be sharing a presentation with you all today. Um, I always like to start off and kind of explain a little bit about who I am and what my role is at the university. So I have my contact information posted here for my email and my phone number. I am the admissions counselor for any of you that are interested in getting more information about UK or applying to UK. So as you need help with scheduling a visit to campus, virtual visits, questions about majors, scholarships, financial aid, housing, application steps, I'm really there for you through the whole process. So please be in touch with me. I also have posted our social media handles because it's really helpful to be able to get a daily glimpse into what your college is going to be like. You can see what the weather is like. You can see what the students look like, what kind of events go on on campus. You get to see what different parts of the physical campus look like. Uh, so you get a better sense of what life is like as a student there. So I always recommend to go ahead and follow all of those things. I do have a couple short videos embedded in this presentation. They're just a minute long, but they give you a little bit better glimpse into what we are about. Being a student at UK every day is a new adventure. The university here has a lot of opportunities that most people don't even know about. I thought I knew what UK was, but once I got onto campus, I learned that there was so much more that I didn't see from the outside. When I kind of set the foot on campus, I just knew that this is where I wanted to be. The campus is such a beautiful place. From the time I've toured, even just to this year, campus has changed so much. A lot of new buildings. That's, that's the first thing that pops in my head. Like, whenever you turn, something's either being built or just got built. UK is one of those places that pictures just don't do it justice. Definitely give UK a visit. You might think that it's this super big university. But you get here and it doesn't feel like a big school. It's very tight knit and it's as big or as small as you want it to be. I refer to this place as home when I'm back at my real home. It's been the best year of my life. I've just really, really found my home here and my place here and I just, I love it. So most people know about UK that we are a large school. We have about 31,000 students on our campus and we are mostly famous for UK basketball. Uh, the athletics experience at UK is unparalleled. It's the best place to be a fan, but we have a lot going on besides just the athletics piece. We have all of the big school amenities and opportunities that you could be looking for. We have tons of majors to choose from. We have over 500 clubs and organizations, and we have all top tier resources for study abroad, research, career services, and any kind of involvement you want. But we have all of those big school opportunities with a really small feel. We are known for hospitality and friendliness uh, and being a really welcoming place where people are just nice. Um, so you have the school spirit energy, you have the Southern kindness, and you have access to tons of opportunities for your education. So there, it's a really special campus. Uh, affordability is really important factor when you're looking at an out of state education and our total cost is about 43,000 with everything included out of state. We do have great scholarship opportunities from a lot of different sources, so make sure to talk to me about what scholarships you can qualify for. 
We have a beautiful updated campus. In the last 10 years, we have built 14 new residence halls, a brand new student center, academic science building, business building, and law building. So we have the most beautiful campus we ever have. Um, so come check us out. We're located in a city called Lexington. Most people kind of think of Kentucky as a very rural state, but Lexington's a small city. It's about 300,000 people. So we have multiple targets. We have restaurants, movie theaters, shopping areas, and there's a lot to do. Here is a short video telling you a little bit more about our city. You know, Lexington has this great downtown area, but then, you know, just drive a few miles out and you feel like you're in this small town, in this, this great area. And you're also a 10 minute drive from the Rolling Hills, by the horse farms, and 10 minute drive from Keeneland. Keeneland is really nice. I've gone once and I loved it and I want to go to Keeneland more. It's a great place to kind of go to if you are wanting to kind of escape the city. It's a great mix of being homey enough with enough green to make you feel at home but also the city so you can enjoy the city life and the culture that comes along with it and you kind of get the best of both worlds. These are our application steps. We are part of Common App and Coalition. December 1st is our deadline and we are test optional this year so talk to me about more details for the application. I mentioned that we have 14 new residence halls on campus. Everything is suite style. We have Tempur-Pedic mattresses, laundry machines that will text you when your laundry is done. And most of our students have a private bedroom. Uh, so we have some really comfortable modern places to live. If you wanna do a visit with us, we do have on-campus visits available. And we also have virtual options. So make sure to talk to me about what's best for you. Thank you. And next we'll be hearing from Simmons University. Hi folks, I'm sorry for that technical difficulty. Let me get my screen up. My name is Kate Innes. I'm the Director of Undergraduate Admission at Simmons University. And I'll try this one more time. I think I've got it this time. Excellent. <clears throat> so again, Simmons University, we're in Boston, Massachusetts, and my name is Kate. This screen shows you a little bit about our school. Uh, we are about 1,800 students, so we are a smaller campus, and we're right in the heart of Boston. So I love this picture that you can see on the left because it shows you um, where we are in the Fenway neighborhood within Boston. So in the foreground of the picture, you can see our campus. That's our academic campus. Um, and you can see it's centered around our main quad. So our students have their own homey space within the city. Um, and then you can see uh, further away the skyscrapers of Boston in the downtown area. So it's very easy to get around the city um, and we're integrated throughout. Um, so it's a great location. We have over 60 different majors. We have over 70 different organizations. So there's definitely always something to study, always something to do on campus. Um, and one of the things we love about our small size is that we have small class sizes. So our average class size is about 15. And what that means is that you are going to get to know your faculty if you go to Simmons. Um, you're definitely going to get to know your fellow students. Um, and there's a lot of discussion and engagement in our classrooms. Now, a little bit more about Boston. Um, you can see here, this is Stormy the Shark. So that is our mascot, Stormy. And Stormy is in front of the iconic Sitco sign in Boston, just down the street from Simmons. Um, and Stormy is excited about the fact that we have over 300,000 college students in Boston. 
So Boston is absolutely a college town. We always say it runs on a uh, student schedule and there's so many events um, that students can partake in, whether it be uh, cultural events, uh, museums, festivals, sporting events, um, everything is right around us, restaurants. Um, and so we're so excited post COVID to kind of get out there and experience all of these things to the fullest again. The other thing that's great about our neighborhood is that we are right near the Longwood Medical Area. Um, and so for those students who are interested in the health professions, um, we are right next to um, Boston Children's Hospital, Beth Israel, Dana-Farber, some amazing institutions where our students can do internships and research and clinicals um, right a block away. Um, and then just the last thing I wanted to say about our neighborhood is that we're actually part of a consortium called the Colleges of the Fenway Consortium. And there are five schools, Simmons being one, which are all within blocks of each other. And our students can cross register and take classes at the other campuses, as well as participate in activities at the other campuses. So while we all have our own distinct programs and clubs and organizations, our students can also choose from these broader options as well. So it's never boring in our neighborhood. Now here's our list of majors, minors, and special programs. Um, whether you're a student who knows exactly what you want to study or you aren't sure, um, we definitely have a number of majors to choose from. And for those who enter undecided, we certainly help you um, along the way to choosing your major. And for those of you who know exactly what you want to study, you can certainly hit the ground running when you come to Simmons. So nursing and physical therapy are two majors I just wanted to speak about for a moment because they're our most popular majors and they are selective. So when students apply to Simmons, they need to go through another review for both uh, nursing and PT. Um, and that's because we're limited on the spaces we have in terms of clinical placements. So our nursing program um, is very well known. We're ranked seventh in the country according to College Factual and we have a really high pass rate on the NCLEX, which is the board exam. Um, so certainly a lot of our students and a lot of the nurses in Boston um, graduated from, from Simmons. Our physical therapy program is what's called a three plus three program. So that means that the first three years are undergraduate study in exercise science and the next three years are graduate study in PT. So you graduate in six years um, with your doctorate in physical therapy. So that saves time and money um, and allows you to go out and start practicing physical therapy. Um, and in addition to that, we also have other accelerated programs um, or we call them plus one programs where you can combine your undergrad degree with a grad degree and start studying that grad degree before you, before you finish your undergrad. So you save time and you save money that way. Now, 100% of our students participate in real world learning. So this is really important to us for all of our majors that our students are getting experience, um, whether that be internship, research, um, again, clinical placements, like I mentioned for some of our health profession majors. Um, and there's so many opportunities throughout the city of Boston. So whether it's, whether it's business, whether it's entertainment, whether it's communications, there are certainly opportunities for students to participate while they're taking classes and to complement their classes. So finally, I wanted to mention um, something about Simmons. I always say this at the beginning, but I forgot today. We are a women's centered university. Um, and we think there's a lot of benefits to being a women's centered university. Um, we have some statistics that show that students who graduate from women's centered universities um, are very likely to be leaders um, and successful in their field. And we really feel like our community of women um, uplifts and empowers um, our incoming students to be leaders and successful in whatever they choose to do next. So thanks very much. Please let me know if you have questions about Simmons and I hope to talk to you soon. Thank you. Next, we'll be hearing from Keene University. Hi everyone, my name is Erin Fitzgerald and I'm an admissions counselor at Kane University. Let me get my presentation up and rolling. Here we go. All right, so to start off, as I said, my name is Erin Fitzgerald. Um, my 
specialty here at King University is I work with the international student population. I also work with the College of Liberal Arts. So any students who are interested in pursuing a major with my College of Liberal Arts that includes psychology, sociology, English, communications, media, theater, music, all of those guys, um, I would be your go-to. That's my contact information right there. You can feel free to use that. And if you want to learn more, there's a QR code you can check out, okay? So the three prongs or the three um, tiers that we're most proud of at King University is our affordability, our location, and our diversity. So I want to start off by talking about our affordability. We are the most um, inexpensive or the cheapest comprehensive university in the state of New Jersey, and we believe in full transparency. So we like students to know before they even apply what they're going to be expected to pay if they choose to make their home at Kane. So I have a breakdown right here of all of our numbers for you for our in and out of state tuition fees. Um, note that those are per semester, so you would be doubling them if you're looking at a yearly rate. We also do have scholarships available for out of state students that would essentially negate the cost difference. So you'd be paying in state tuition and fees instead of out of state, okay? Uh, and we do also have a very comprehensive merit-based scholarship structure. Once again, we like to be transparent, so I'm laying it out all on the line. Uh, if you want to take a screenshot or take a little picture with your phone, you can go for it. But it's also all available on our website. We are very proud of the fact that we try to give students the most uh, bang for their buck and help them out with scholarships as best we can, okay? Um, in addition, I do want to mention that this year we are going test optional for students with a 3.0 GPA or higher. Um, more word later of whether or not we're going to be just going test optional in general. We know lots of students were not able to take their SATs because of COVID. And my neighbor is playing a concert, but we're going to keep going. Um, so sorry if you can hear that. Hopefully it's good music. Um, but as I was saying, we are going test optional for students with a 3.0 GPA or higher, and they would still be eligible for all those scholarships even with the test optional. Okay. Second is location. So we are very fortunate to have three different satellite campuses within New Jersey, but the one I really wanna to touch on is our main campus in Union, that middle one right there. Um, and that is only a 20 minute train ride away from New York City. We have a train station right on campus and we are a 10 minute shuttle bus away from New York Liberty National Airport. So we really are super lucky that we have the city right there, um, but we're out of the city ourselves. So students are still able to enjoy that kind of quieter, more rural feel if that's what they're looking for. Um, and also we're very proud to be the only country, the only public institution in the country that has a fully English speaking satellite campus in Wenzhou, China. So we do have students studying right there. So lots of Chinese students that are there and we will Hopefully next semester get study abroad students back there. They're home right now because of COVID. Um, but that's a really cool opportunity for students who are interested in studying abroad, especially business is one of our largest programs for Wenzhou China because lots of business organizations have you go for a more international feel. So this allows students to go and actually study abroad for the same exact tuition and fees as in state tuition. So all of your tuition, all of your financial aid would just transition right over if you're interested in studying in China. So it's a really, really cool opportunity. And we do also have lots of other study abroad programs that we offer with over 60 different countries there if China is where you'd like to go. Okay, so the next I have diversity. Um, we are very, very proud to be in the top five most diversity universities in the country. We were also voted one of the best colleges according to US News for upward social mobility. Um, so we're really proud of the fact that we are helping and serving lots of first generation students and helping to walk them through the college experience and help them better their futures. So we're really proud of that aspect of who we are as a university. We're also a Hispanic serving university. So we do have um, a good number of faculty and staff who are bilingual and are able to serve students who um, are speaking Spanish, things like that. We also have a program specifically called the Spanish Speaking Program, which is a wonderful initiative that basically allows students who are native Spanish speakers to come and learn with us for two years and take classes in their native language. And then after those two years, they would transition into taking classes with the rest of their students in, or, or their colleagues, excuse me, in English. Um, but it basically would give them a chance to better their English and still be able to get a bachelor's degree. And students who are in the SSP program do not have to take uh, their SATs. It's something else that I would like to mention. Okay, so 
that's really it. Uh, that's who we are. We are very proud of our location, our diversity, and our affordability. And please feel free to contact us. My contact sheet was on the front. Um, I can drop it in the chat in a little bit. But we also do have our general email right there, admitme at keen.edu. And finally, who doesn't love coupons? Uh, we have a $75 fee waiver code right down there, KIST2021. If you use that to fill out an application on Kane's um, application. So it doesn't work for the Common App, but if you do Kane's specific application, you can use that code to waive the fee. All right, and thank you so much for spending some time with me. Thank you. Next, we'll be hearing from James Madison University. Awesome, cool. Let me share my screen. Okay, cool. Awesome. Get started. Uh, thank you all for joining me tonight. I'm so excited to talk to you about James Madison University. Uh, we are located in Harrisonburg, Virginia. It's about a six to seven hour drive from New Jersey. Um, my name is Trent Pace. I am your admission counselor for the central southern New Jersey area. If you have not already done so, please scan the QR code in the bottom right corner to join our mailing list. And as you'll see tonight, our focus here at JMU is on the undergraduate experience. We have unique opportunities reserved for undergrads. Our academic and student life support is designed for undergraduates and our students receive individualized attention from their faculty members as our professors and their true passion is teaching and educating their students. Another thing too as well, I forgot to say about myself, I graduated from James Madison University, graduated in 2017 with my communication degree and I finished up my master's degree last year in communication studies. So let's get you acquainted um, with more of JMU. So again, we are a public institution. We're a state school with a total enrollment of approximately 22,000 students, um, 20,000 of which are undergraduates. Uh, despite our large student body, we definitely maintain a strong sense of community and a small school feel. This is evident by our small class size, which is an average of 25 students. In fact, only 12% of our classes have more than 50 students, actually. And additionally, 98% of our classes are taught by professors, as opposed to graduate assistants or teaching assistants. We recognize that college is an investment, so we have you learning from experts in your courses. We have plenty of support here at JMU, academic or otherwise, and if you have any questions on specifics, drop them in the question and answer chat box and I will address them at the end of the presentation. We also have Division I varsity sports teams here at JMU. Uh, game days are amazing. You would definitely enjoy it. Um, they are just as exciting and the school spirit here is unparalleled. That's why we are the number one most recommended school by our students. And I also think that is why we have such a high freshman retention rate at 89% almost 10 points above the national average. Now that you know more about us, let's talk about how you can get here to JMU. This is the most important part. This is the reason why I'm here. So the deadlines have changed a little bit because of COVID. Our early action deadline is November 15th and our regular decision deadline is February 1st. So it does not matter which one you do, uh, depends on if you're ready to apply, then early action, you can start with that. Or if you wanna go ahead and do regular decision, go ahead and do regular decision. So we look at your core academic classes. That's how we evaluate you as a student. That's your math, social science, science, English, and your foreign language classes. The things that are optional, we are a test optional school. We are also have the personal statement, which is optional a letter of recommendation that is optional and we only accept one letter of recommendation. So make sure whoever writes that letter of recommendation will talk highly of you as a person. And the other thing that is optional is the extracurricular activities. So if you want to write anything in that section, feel free to do so. But we mainly focus on your core academic classes and the rigor of your curriculum. 
which is your AP Honors, IB, dual enrollment, et cetera. So JMU offers 164 undergraduate academic programs that are organized in several colleges. Much of the learning here takes place across different academic disciplines in an environment of innovation and collaboration. Also, many of our students choose to double major or have a major and a minor or even two minors, if you can handle that. And in addition to their major, all JMU students complete a common core of classes that we call general education courses. And students take 41 credit hours of general education courses. And if you're interested in our top 10 majors, I can put that in the question and answer chat box at the end of the presentation. So as I mentioned, at the beginning of the presentation, we are located right off Interstate 81 in Harrisonburg, Virginia which is in the beautiful Shenandoah Valley. To give you some perspective, Harrisonburg is two hours from both Richmond, Virginia and Washington, DC. There is an abundance of outdoor adventure opportunities in this area. And our students thoroughly enjoy taking advantage of all that is offered. When you do have the chance to come to campus, uh, I recommend that you do not miss out on the great food that we have on campus and even downtown. Um, there are so many great restaurants and a variety of cuisines available for you too. So you'll notice my contact information at the top of this page. Please screenshot it um, or take a picture of it or write it down. Whatever you need to do to have this available to you. Um, I am more easily accessible through email, so feel free to email me at best. Um, if you did not get a chance to join the mailing list at the beginning of this presentation, please do so at jmu slash info. And I also encourage you to sign up for a virtual visit at jmu.edu slash visit. Thank you again. Thank you. Next, we'll be hearing from Rosemont College. Also, just a reminder to please send in any Q&A questions. Hi, everybody. My name is Richard Bell, and I'm an admissions counselor at Rosemont College. I'm going to do my best to talk slowly this evening because my audio has been in and out just a little bit. But um, I think everything's working. Okay, awesome. So about Rosemont, we're a small Catholic liberal arts college located just outside Philadelphia, right next to Villanova University on Philadelphia's main line in Rosemont, Pennsylvania. We have about 500 undergraduate students as well as 500 uh, graduate students who live off campus as well. And uh, we're about 15, 20 minutes from Philadelphia, as I mentioned, so it's easy to network and you know, get to know the city take advantage of job opportunities as well. Um, the most popular majors and minors on campus are really business, biology, education, and psychology. So within our business, excuse me, our biology major, we have several different tracks and partnerships. Most, noticeably, most notably a four plus one with Drexel University in nursing and in, uh, with the University of the Sciences in Philadelphia. We have partnerships in pharmacy and physical therapy as well. And given that we're right down the street from Villanova, students can also cross-register with Villanova University as well. Um, our application process is pretty straightforward. We're, we're on the common application, so students can apply through that. They can also apply using Rosemont's electronic application on, the, on our website as well. As far as the application process is concerned, we are test optional. If your GPA is above a 3.0, on a 4.0 scale, you don't have to submit your test scores if you don't want to do so. And we have unveiled that policy a couple of years ago for a couple of different reasons. One is because test scores don't define everyone's academic ability. Our office understands that. And in addition to that, high school is, at a, a, you know, four years is a long period of time. And there's so much growth and achievement that takes place. And we'd rather measure four years of achievement more so than four hours. So that really is important to us as well. Within the application process, we do have our early action promise as well. And that means if you apply by November 1st, we'll let you know by December 1st if you're accepted to Rosemont or not. So there is quick turnaround time. Since we have a smaller student body and a smaller counseling staff, we're, we're able to review our applications um, in, a, in a very quick way. Um, about some fun facts, about 43% of our students are student athletes. And it's also important to note that we do value diversity, both with different religions, different and races, races and ethnicities as well. And um, so it's a Catholic college, for example, but only about half our students are Catholic. 
we do require students to take uh, different philosophy and theology classes, but they're rooted in the history of both of those topics. They're not preaching one religion or another. Um, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff going on at Rosemont. Um, you can cross register, as I mentioned. Some of our students study abroad as well. Um, we have partnerships with a few other schools in that regard. Most students do it during their junior year. I joke that I didn't do it when I was in college because I wouldn't come back. You know, I would go off and fall in love with another land and my mom and dad would be fighting to have me come back. But anyway, um, most students do it in their junior year and they do it during the junior year because they have some experience under their belt as an undergrad. You know, they're not coming right out of high school anymore. They're a little bit older, a little more mature. And um, given that fact, um, you know, it's, it's tough. Uh, sometimes it can be tough to determine what semester you do it because there's different requirements you have to fulfill at Rosemont. But then you can take, you know, different electives, different business courses uh, abroad. It's easier to do with some majors than others. Some majors have more flexibility but you know, for science majors, there's a lot of on-ground work and labs they have to complete at Rosemont. So that can be kind of tough in that regard. Um, and yeah, overall, a lot of really good stuff going on at Rosemont. We are doing in-camp, uh, on-campus visits this fall, despite COVID-19. Uh, we are just limiting it to one family at this time. So um, yeah, if anybody's interested in coming to visit, I can shoot my email over to you. And uh, yeah, good luck with your college search. Thank you. And next we'll be hearing from California College of the Arts. Hi everyone, I'm Columbia Schaefer. Oh, I've got to share my screen once you're done sharing. There we go. Um, awesome. So I'm Columbia Schaefer. I'm with California College of the Arts. Um, we are a private art and design college in San Francisco and Oakland, California. Um, we offer 21 different majors, um, so I know these are a little bit different than the majors that you've seen from the other schools here this evening. Um, in terms of our largest programs, we have a really strong animation program. We're well known for our five-year Bachelor of Architecture program, and we have an upcoming game arts program that's very popular as well. Um, in our hope to grow you as an artist and help you understand um, a wide range of arts, and design fields, we also offer a number of minors that can be partnered with different arts majors. So we really do want to focus on art and design and training you to become a professional artist. We are very much a hands-on school, as you might imagine, with the majors that we offer. In our first year, if you are interested in exploring all of the different kinds of art that we offer, we encourage you to take our core studio courses that would be an introductory drawing course, a two-dimensional art course, three-dimensional um, sculpture, as well as a 4D or time-based media course where you do film, animation, and digital design. So whatever kind of art you want to do, we hope that you learn to use all of the resources on campus before you dive into your major. And this is also great for any of you who know you love to make art, but maybe you're not quite sure exactly what kind of art is the right major for you. We are also the only art school in the United States to require a critical ethnic studies curriculum for all of our students. At CCA, we firmly believe that art is part of the larger conversation in the world around you. And we really want you to explore ways to give back to your community and to think critically about the world around you, whether you're studying animation, illustration, fashion design, doesn't matter. There's some way that that's engaged with the world around you. We're also a quite interdisciplinary school. So across those 21 majors that I shared, students will often work between them. So you can see a couple of course examples like this. Um, a great example on this list is our world building class, which teaches students in animation, illustration, film, and writing and literature, how to think expansively about the creative process of creating a new fictional world, whether that's in a graphic novel or in a movie. In terms of life on campus, we are a relatively small school of just about 2,000 students total. Um, we have just about 1,500 undergraduate students and then about 500 graduate students, giving us an eight to one student to teacher ratio. So you really get to know your professors and create close bonds with professional artists. About 95% of all of our faculty are working professionals. We're also rated as one of the top 10 most diverse campuses in the US 
not just as an art and design school, but all colleges overall. As I mentioned earlier, we really believe in making and getting your hands dirty. So we have over 60 different studios and maker spaces, including very rare kinds of spaces like glass blowing facilities and one of the last three remaining forges on a college or university campus in the US if you want to learn how to smith metal. We also invite hundreds of different visiting artists and professionals to campus each and every semester to help you grow your practice and to get engaged with the arts world around you. This is an overview of our campus. You can see how close we are to the center of San Francisco. The area that you see here, the expanded campus, is our current campus, and we are currently expanding our fine arts buildings. What you see back here is an architect's rendering. We are also a residential campus. We require students to live on campus their first two years in one of our um, residence halls. Most first year students live right across the street, which is a really nice commute to have as an urban school. San Francisco um, is a wonderful city for creative talent. You can see a couple images here from the many museums and galleries that we offer. There are over 50 different art galleries within 10 blocks of our San Francisco campus. So certainly a very creative area. And then you also know that San Francisco is the hub for Silicon Valley. So many of our students also take their art and design practice into the tech industry with internships. Speaking of internships, these are just a couple of the recent internships our students have partnered with. Um, you'll recognize many of these companies. And what I think is helpful to point out about these internships is all of these companies are either headquartered in or have offices in San Francisco. So it makes it really easy for our students to balance internships with their curriculum. You can take classes in the morning and then hop on a quick bus ride to get to many of these companies to do an afternoon internship. And a lot of times that is a structured part of our curriculum. Um, that internship program is a big part of why we have such strong career stats. We're rated the best value art school for return on investment. And 83% of all of our students are employed within their first year of graduation. Of course, about 10% also go on to grad school. So that helps make up the you know, remaining 100%. Um, a common misconception I often hear about art school is that it's impossible to get a job in the arts, but I do want to point out that 78% of all of our alumni work in the field that they study, um, so that is quite a high statistic. In terms of admission requirements, it's going to look pretty familiar based on everything the schools before me have said, with the one distinct difference that we do require a portfolio of 10 to 15 pieces of your art. So if you want to ask questions about the portfolio, I'm happy to answer those in the Q&A, or you can also sign up for portfolio reviews one on one with me and we can actually sit down and talk through your art. For those of you who are not yet seniors, we do offer a pre college program where you can come to campus and actually experience art school. So this is great, not just to develop your portfolio and try new art, but it's also a way for you to understand whether or not art school is the right fit for you, because art school is such a specific kind of education. You're welcome to scan here or take a screenshot, type this link in later. This is a great way to get signed up for more information. Well, if you sign up here, we'll invite you to do portfolio reviews as well as workshops on how to write an artist statement. So I'll leave you with this. You're welcome to reach out to me anytime. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this is just one of many sessions, so be sure to check out the full schedule. In about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other sessions recordings at the same website. Thank you all. Bye now.